Hey everybody, welcome to part two of our detailed tape up review of the brand new Hobby Boss 148 scale B24J. Yep, this monster right here. So in part two, we're going to focus on the interior and the exterior of the fuselage, the wings, how the wings connect to the fuselage, and how the tail connects to the fuselage. So let's get started with part two. I've got both wings taped up, including the flaps and the control surfaces, and uh, everything fits together pretty good. The only <clears throat> thing you're going to have to watch out for is the flaps. you got to sand a little bit off on this side to get it to fit correctly. <clears throat> and as I pointed out earlier, these can be popped into place after all of this is glued together. You can actually paint these and then put them in place. So the cowlings fit nice and tight on the engine nacelles. You just need to glue them in place. They've actually positioned out a little bit. You can see how tight they are right there and there. <clears throat> the seam line along the leading edge is really really tight. Some of this is the tape is coming loose. You can see how tight that is. You're still going to have to run a bead of super glue along here, but uh, there's no appreciable voids. Now, with the flaps, if you're going to position these partially open, there's some mole punch outs on the inside you're going to have to get rid of. And this flap goes out and down. So be mindful of that. It just doesn't go down like on a B17 they actually protrude aft and then down. So, looks pretty good. And again, you need to uh, replace these engines. They uh, don't do this model justice. Here's the other wing. Same thing. Had to, and that's real tight there. I needed to actually sand that down a little bit more. But uh, again, the tape's coming loose on me a little bit. Um, but it fits nice and tight. Everything fits together real well. Uh, again, the uh, cowlings on the engine nacelles are nice and tight. And uh, I checked the fit of these in the uh, these assembled wings, and the fuselage to wing fit is really tight. You don't need to do anything. You just glue them in place. So, <clears throat> um, these look good and uh, we're ready to take a look at the fuselage. I've got all the main deck and bulkheads glued together and uh, came out pretty good. Now, on the instructions, they go step by step and they have you assemble this entire structure outside of the fuselage. If you do that, it's not going to fit. And that's because these parts are thin and flexible and the pins have a little bit of play in them. So, here's how I did it. I did set this bulkhead in place, this upper piece here which is the roof of the bomb bay, and this bulkhead. Once I got those positioned correctly, and it's really important that this bulkhead sit on the back side of these positioning tabs right here, not on the front, on the back. And then what I did was, once I got it in place, and it kind of stays in place fairly well and the pins will hold it. There's a little bit of flexibility so what I did was I then hit the pin areas with a little bit of testers glue. Just a tiny drop on these four pin locations and that gave me a little bit of working time to make sure that everything was true and correct and after they dried then I ran a bead of super glue here and over here. And after that was dried, then what I did was I worked on this bulkhead and this deck. 
and this lower bulkhead. So <clears throat> um, this lower deck pins up against here and this bulkhead pins to here. Now, once you do that, and you got to make sure that this bulkhead is flush up against the outside of the fuselage framing here and here, right here. So once that's done, um, I had to play with this a little bit, and I wasn't sure that this is supposed to be angled. But if you don't put it at an angle like that, this the cockpit deck will not sit correctly. So this is angled this way, and then the bombardier's location and the location of the Norden bomb site is will sit out here so that the Norden bomb site looks down through the glass. If you try to straighten this out, it's going to pull this back and the Norton bomb site is going to be right about here instead of here. So you need to be mindful of that. So <clears throat> the other thing I did was this lower piece here, this is not glued in place. I, it snaps in place and it helped position this piece. Now working aft, um, this deck is slightly longer than it should be. So you got to cut a little bit off of this end, otherwise this bulkhead is going to go like this. And this bulkhead needs to be up against these pieces, these protrusions on the inside area where the 50 cals are going to sit. So right there, you can see the bulkhead is sitting right there, right on it. That's where it needs to go. This is straight, and this is straight. And then when you cut this piece off, um, for kind of form fit this in place, this will pop into place, but I didn't glue this in either. These three pieces here are pretty thin and flimsy, and they fit well into their locations here, here, and here. The problem you're gonna have is that you need to shave some of this here, here, and here because they're too wide and the fuselage won't close up back here. So you got to be mindful of that. And uh, what I would do is I would go ahead and shave it down, uh, tape it in place, check the fit, shave it a little more, kind of form fit all three of these into place. I didn't do that. I glued them in place and then I shaved them down. Um, either way will work, uh, but this one is fairly strong, this one is very flimsy, and this one is very flimsy. So, um, the other, then, the, then what I did was, uh, this is the base for the forward turret, and what you, need, what you should do is go ahead and just put a tiny bead of tester's glue right along here, pop it in place, and then close up the fuselage so that you can position it. Because if you don't, if you don't do that, it's going to sit this way a little bit, and then it's going to look weird. So by closing up the fuselage, you can be sure that um, this piece here is flush against the bottom like this piece is. So uh, I think that kind of concludes my comments. Um, now, the, let me mention one more thing. The forward landing gear sits right there and this deck is not very thick and so you got to make sure that everything is glued very very well down here here otherwise this deck is going to move on you a little bit especially when you put all the weight that you're going to put inside the fuselage <clears throat> there's um there's another bulkhead that I think goes here, but I haven't put that in yet. And there's a deck down here. You really, um, this is where you're going to put your weight, right in here, right in here. And you can put some weight in here too, up against this bulkhead and the port bulkhead, because you're really not going to see it. And the balancing point 
the wings, uh, the balancing point for the wings is right about here. So putting the weight inside of here will is probably the best place to do it. And there's there's a lot of parts for the Bombay, um, and of course I didn't do any of those because <clears throat> if you glue them in place, it makes it really really hard to paint them all. Um, so again, the the big thing that the takeaway here is put these parts inside the fuselage and glue them together so everything gets trued up correctly. If you do it the way the instructions tell you to do it. You're going to regret it. It's not going to work and it's not going to fit. Uh, last note is that there's a piece on both sides of the fuselage right here. This is C2 and the other side is C3. And <clears throat> when you glue these in place, you need to make sure that you laminate this whole piece to the top side because this top side is very, very thin. I haven't sanded down the, the super glue yet. What I did was I, I put uh, slow set super glue on the entire interior surface and then positioned it and pressed it down real hard and let the glue seep out. You really need to laminate this so that when you go ahead and fix the seam on the upper side, you won't punch right through. You've only got about a 64th of an inch on this upper skin if you don't laminate it and you're going to ruin the model. So just be mindful of that. Um, so I use slow set and then I put a bead of medium super glue right along here and uh, you have to do it on both sides. Here's the other side. Same thing. So just be mindful of that. So <clears throat> with that, the, uh, that's as much of the interior as I'm going to put together. And let me show you this. Comes this pops right out. And uh, there was a pin here, and I think probably maybe a thirty-second of an inch I cut off here, so that it fit from here to here well without pushing that bulkhead that way. And if it, you push it that way, the ball turret, you're going to have a problem fitting the ball turret in place. So. Um, those are my comments on the fuselage interior decking and um, next step is to uh, start taping everything together and let's see how it looks. I've got the fuselage taped together as best I can and uh, it fits fairly good. You gotta watch out this bulkhead needs to be sanded down a little bit otherwise you're not going to be able to close that gap right there. And um, I suspect that the console may, uh, the uh, instrument console for the cockpit may be kind of tight too. I don't have that in place, but you can see how you can close that up. In the aft area here, you've got a gap here that needs to be filled, but super glue can take care of that. And even if you put tape along here, you're going to lose some of this detail. So there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You might be able to, if you're really, really careful, put some glue here, put some glue here, let it dry, and then put a drop up here and let it seep in the center and let it seep to the left and to the right. And then when you sand, when you come up to this area, sand this way, and you'll be able to preserve that reinforcing strap on the fuselage. On the bottom, <clears throat> real tight until you get to here. It, cl it closes up really well on the Bombay, but you, you have to hold it together when you super glue it. And same here. Up here, it's uh, got a little bit of a gap, and I think it's because the plastic is not sitting like this, it's kind of sitting like this. And that's what creates this problem. There's kind of a curve here. Some of the monogram kits have that problem too. And up front, it's fairly tight fit. Right there. Get it? Yeah, there we go. You're going to have to be careful how you glue that together so you don't destroy all that beautiful detail up there. Now, one thing I noticed was the Bombardier's deck 
tends to slip above this area here and what you're going to need to do is make sure that it sits right there otherwise you won't be able to close it <clears throat> so yeah it's looking pretty good now I closed up the old monogram fuselage and one thing I noticed was that the Hobby Boss kit is fatter than the monogram kit so I don't know whether this one's too thin or this one's too fat but clearly there's a difference in the width of these models let me move this down a little bit so you can see it better there's definitely a, a width issue and um, this one fits together a little bit better than a monogram kit which is going to require a little more work but um, <clears throat> I think they're both good kits um, monogram has enough detail inside to make it look good although the Hobby Boss kit a lot of the interior detail like all of the hydraulic lines are all separate so they're easier to paint but um, yeah it uh, looking pretty good again not sure whether the monogram kit is more accurate or the Hobby Boss kit is more accurate I noticed the HK B17 series, they're slightly wider than either the old Revell B17 or the old Monogram B17. So I don't know which is more accurate, but um, <clears throat> it's not a deal killer by any means, but uh, I just wanted you to be aware of that. So uh, that concludes my comments on the fuselage. and. Uh, now we're ready to do a little bit more taping up. I checked the fit of the horizontal stabilizer for the elevators and uh, what I discovered was there's an interference issue. There's tiny channels here and here, here and here, here and here. Cut them off. Those channels are supposed to sit on top of these ribs and slip in place and they don't. So you either cut these ribs off at the top or just cut these channels and it's much easier just to cut the channels and sand them smooth and you'll get a nice tight fit so now it fits nice and tight at the top and you can see you've got a little bit of work to do there but much better than the old monogram kit and on the underside nice and tight all you got to do is just a little bit of white glue there after you primed it contour it with a damp q-tip and you're done so uh, that fits real well and again just cut those tiny channels off and uh, the fit issue is resolved I've got the wings inserted into the fuselage and you can see that the fit is really really tight both upper and lower. You don't need to do anything. And the other thing is that they slip into place quite nicely on both sides. And they also come out pretty quick. So they slip into place perfectly. Just like that. So the fit is really, really nice. <clears throat> now, um, I try to put I, I put the horizontal stabilizer and the rudders on and the wheels and just to see how much weight I used that much weight and it still wasn't enough. So it's going to take an enormous amount of weight to get this to sit right. And my concern is that the landing gear up here may collapse on you or the deck that this piece sits on right here that it's going to bow up a little bit so where this sits on the underside let me turn this over in here you're going to have to strengthen that deck from the inside just sandwich some plastic in there and you'll be okay so um, but yeah it's uh impressive looking model but it's gonna take a lot of weight
The assembled model is fairly large. The fuselage itself is over 17 and a half inches long from the tip of the guns in the front to the tip of the guns in the back. The cockpit canopy has a really tight fit on the port side as well as on the starboard side. And the top turret fits nicely in place with no gaps around the edges. Repositioning the control surfaces and the flaps on this kit will be fairly easy. And especially on the back with the horizontal stabilizer, the elevators, and the rudders. The aileron and the flap on the left wing fit tightly in place. The reinforcing ribbing on the inside of the wings really helps add strength to the wings because the wingspan is over 27 and a half inches long. The aileron and the flap on the right wing also fit tightly in place. This kit is going to require an awful lot of weight to get it to sit correctly on its tricycle landing gear. The rubber tires make it really easy to paint the hubs on this kit. Overall, the model has a really nice appearance. There's a small gap on the left wing, but super glue can easily fill that. The top area of the turret has some really nice detail. The bombardier's glass has a really tight fit, and this kit even captured the small vents in the front. The engraved panel lines are very petite, and so are the rivets. They're almost invisible. When you look at the reference photos of the B-24 out in Tucson, Arizona, two things stand out. One, the surface skin was all lap-jointed, which are best represented by petite raised panel lines, and the surface was covered with raised rivets. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed part two of our two-part series, which is a detailed review of the brand new Hobby Boss 148 scale B-24J. Part 1 and Part 2 were a little bit long that I normally like to do, but you know what? This kit is pretty complicated and it's got a high parts count. And I wanted to show you the techniques that I developed on all of the sub-assemblies. So, with that, please, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Give us a thumbs up. Visit our website at www.mikeeshe.com. Have a great evening and happy scale modeling.